hello and uh, welcome to another one of these videos that I'm making for uh, my patients and for all of the patients in general to discuss different subjects um, that has to do with diseases and ailments of the urinary tract. I'm Dr. Shaheen Alani from Detroit in the United States. In the, I think the first two videos we started talking about prostate cancer. We did talk about prostate cancer, we did talk about the causes of prostate cancer elevation in the PSA and what does that mean. We spoke about uh, the diagnosis of prostate cancer then with uh, an ultrasound guided prostate biopsy. In this episode I'm going to be talking about the um, function or the role of uh, magnetic resonance imaging or MRI in the diagnosis and management of prostate cancer. In the United States, the function of MRI in the management of prostate problems started around 2005 and, uh, to 2006. And the reason behind that is that around that time, the technology of MRI improved to the point that we were able to actually uh, have enough details about what's going on inside the prostate to be able to differentiate or to tell what is a benign region inside the prostate from an area that has uh, a prostate cancer. And since then, there has been an increasing amount of literature that deals with uh, the applications of, pro of um, MRI in the management of patients with elevated PSA and the management of patients with uh, prostate cancer. In my practice, what I usually do is that I do or I recommend an MRI of the prostate for five different group of patients. And the way I would like to discuss those five different groups of patients is that I will discuss them, I'm going to be discussing them from the most important group to the least important group as far as their actual need to have magnetic resonance imaging of the prostate done. The most important group or the group probably that has the most benefits, has the most indication for receiving an MRI of the prostate is individuals who have an elevated PSA, they have a rising PSA, they had an MRI, I'm sorry, they had an ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate before, but that ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate did not provide us with a diagnosis. In that group, what usually happens is that the lesion could be missed with the ultrasound guidance or could be in an area where uh, the tissue of the prostate is usually not biopsied, where an ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate is done the MRI is going to be able to identify that area and then it could guide a targeted biopsy so that the cause of the uh, elevation of the PSA is identified and treated appropriately. So that's group number one. Group number two are individuals who have what we call a low risk type of prostate cancer who have chosen to uh, be managed with active surveillance with no surgery, no radiation therapy. In this group, we would like to make sure that the rest of their prostate does not contain a higher risk type of prostate cancer. And in this group, the MRI, what the MRI does is that it provides us with information about the rest of the prostate so that if there is an area that looks like it is containing a more aggressive type of prostate cancer, that area could, we could be targeted, could be targeted using the information that we get from the MRI and then we could make sure that either their prostate has a, an, an entirely low risk type of prostate cancer and we can treat them with active surveillance or manage them with active surveillance or they have a more aggressive disease and active surveillance is not appropriate for that group of patients. So group number two. Group number three are individuals who have history of prostate cancer and were treated previously with radiation therapy and they have rising PSA. In this group, MRI could be one of the tools that helps us identify if there is a local recurrence or potentially a distant recurrence of the disease to the surrounding organs and we can make decisions on their management. That's group number three. Group number four are patients with what we call a high grade prostate cancer. Those are the individuals who presented with an elevated PSA that they had a biopsy of the prostate that did identify a high risk type of prostate cancer. In that group of patients, I usually use the magnetic resonance imaging, the MRI, to plan for their surgical procedure and as a part of the staging procedure to make sure that there is no involvement of the lymph nodes or the bone or the surrounding tissue. It also helps me decide whether this is an individual that I can do either a urethra sparing or a uh, neurovascular bundle sparing prostatectomy to help preserve their um, sexual function. 
those are four groups. Group number five is the group that's probably um, the uh, group that uh, is uh, the most discussed group these days as far as the indications of magnetic of MRI in prostate uh, cancer or prostate uh, or elevated PSA goes. And that happens for this, uh, the, uh, and that group is the group with just an elevated PSA who did not have an, a targeted biopsy of the prostate or a, an ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate done before. The reason this group requires so much discussion is uh, one, because we are not very sure of the additional benefit that an MRI would provide in that group of patients above what an ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate can provide us with. Because we know that an ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate is accurate in detecting a clinically significant prostate cancer in anywhere between um, 70 and 83 percent so that 17 to 30 percent of patients are the patients who are going to get additional information from having an MRI done when their PSA elevated before any biopsies. That's reason number one. Reason number two is the health issue in the United States because of the cost of health care and because we are all trying to control the proportion of uh, our um, income that's being consumed by health care any kind of intervention, we have to do what's called cost effectiveness studies and we have to make sure that the amount of information that we get from that intervention is justified, that it's worth paying for. Therefore, in, in individuals who did not have a biopsy before, who have an elevated PSA, there is not a very strong evidence that the intervention in that group of patients is cost effective. Therefore, if you are a patient that I'm managing in my practice and you're one of the now, first four groups, then I would strongly suggest that you would have an MRI of the prostate done. I would also suggest that you would have an MRI of the prostate done if you are an individual who belong to that fifth group and you can afford to pay out of pocket for your MRI if the insurance did not cover it because we, did not, we do not want you to end up with a big bill that is going to be maybe difficult to pay for. So these are the indications in uh, my view for performing an MRI of the prostate. What happens next? So we decided that you are an individual that would benefit from an MRI of the prostate. We would send an order to the radiology department. The radiology department call you, schedule you to come in to have an MRI done. The MRI is done within the radiology department. Previously, the MRI used to be done with what's called an endorectal coil, which is part of the MRI machine that goes through the uh, rectum. This is no longer the case. It's more now more comfortable to the patients. Probably the MRI itself takes about 30 to 35 minutes, but it's probably take a half a day to get in, get the study done and get out or go home. After that, the results are read by the radiologist and the results are sent to your urologist. And that is where you come in to meet the urologist to discuss the results of the MRI. What I'd like to do next is I'd like to uh, explain to you the way to understand the results of the MRI. What you need to know about the results of your MRI so that uh, you make sure that the management or all of the amount of the information that is possible have been taken out of the MRI report and is being used in the management of your disease. The pieces of information that I'd like you to know from your MRI report are the following. Number one, what is called a PIRADS score, P-I-R-A-D-S score. The PIRAT score provides us with the likelihood or the probability that an area inside the prostate, when biopsied, will have cancer in it. The PIRAT score goes from 1 to 5. The higher is the PIRAT score, the higher is the chance that this area will have prostate cancer in it. Okay, So that's the PIRAT score. So somebody with a PIRAT score of 4, for example, has about an 80% chance that they, have, that they would have prostate cancer in the area that looks abnormal, what we call a lesion, inside in the, in the prostate, if that area inside the prostate was biopsied using the MRI information. So that's one, PIRAT score. Two, you need to know the location, and three, the size of the lesions that are inside the prostate, because the bigger is the lesion, and the more peripheral, the closer is the lesion is to the uh, periphery of the prostate, the higher is the chance that there is an ex, what we call an extra capsular extension, extension of the 
uh, cancer outside the prostate. And the more difficult it is to do nerve sparing if this lesion is an area is in an area that's close to the nerves that supply uh, the penis. Okay, so we said number one pyrod score, number two and three lesion size and location, and then finally what I'd like you also to know is what I'd like you also to know is uh, um, the condition of the organs that are around the prostate. Is this disease localized to the prostate? Is it extending outside the prostate? Is it involving the lymph nodes? Is it involving the bones in the pelvis, which are the bony group that is most commonly affected by prostate cancer? This is important. This is part of the staging process of prostate cancer. And there's another piece of information that I think is important, but if you didn't know it, that's fine. We can obtain that using ultrasound in clinic, which is the size of your prostate, because that also helps us uh, to a very limited extent decide on the best approach to treat uh, your cancer. So these are the pieces of information that I think are important for you to know about the results of the magnetic resonance imaging of the MRI that was done on your prostate. If you are an individual who is going to benefit then from an MRI targeted biopsy, then the images, the data that was obtained through doing an MRI of the prostate can then be fed into a system that builds a 3D model of your prostate, helps us guide the needle inside the prostate so that we can biopsy the specific area that looks abnormal on the MRI and then we can get uh, uh, accurate information about your cancer to use it in the management. Whether you have an MRI targeted biopsy or the prostate of, or you have an ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate, the tissue would then go to the pathologist. The pathologist will examine tissue, provide us with an information that we can use to build a strategy for how to treat your cancer and whether we need to do any other type of testing. This is going to be hopefully the subject of my next video where we talk about, based on the pathology reports, how do we uh, categorize prostate cancer, how we treat prostate uh, um, cancer. So this is going to be in the uh, upcoming video. This is what I would like to, or this is what I wanted to discuss about MRI of the prostate. Uh, I'm Dr. Shaheen Alani from Detroit in the United States, and thank you so much for listening.